Hi everybody, uh, Tyler Kupfer here for another tutorial. This is going to be part two of my uh, character animation series in Flash. So let's go ahead and get started. Last time I showed you how to set up a character and do some basic 2D rigging. And today we're going to expand on that and look at a couple of the uh, principles of animation and uh, how they can be accomplished in Flash. So today we're going to look at uh, easing, squash and stretch, anticipation, and overlapping action. Those are four of the 12 well-known principles of animation. So let's take a look here at what we got. Um, here's a character that we rigged last time. And um, when we got it all rigged, we had it so that uh, all the different body parts were symbols, and each of them were on a different layer within a main action symbol. So this, in this case, duck looks around. And uh, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing a little bit of a, a head turn, just like the name implied, duck looks around. And uh, I'm going to be showing you how some of these principles apply. So first of all, let's get started. Uh, basic uh, first step that we want to do is uh, start with one basic motion and then build on it. Um, from place to place. So I'm going to make my columns of, uh, of keyframes here like I did before. And what I'm going to start out with is just doing a basic uh, turn of his of his uh, main facial features. So I'm going to select these main four. It uh, selects those keyframes for me. And I'm just going to move them over here. And uh, rotate it a little bit so that he is looking up a little bit. And then I'm also going to uh, nudge the head and rotate just a little. Um, if this was uh, my final piece, I would also uh, switch this thing on top of his head so it was pointing the other direction, but we won't get into that right now. So now that I've got that turning, I can go ahead and tween those first parts. I'm only going to tween the layers that had motion changed, create a motion tween, and so now I've got that main motion but uh, but it's very it's very straight it's very linear because flash by default tweens everything uh, in a linear fashion so what we want to do first of all to add give this a little bit more life is to add an ease so I'm gonna go ahead and select all five of these and go down to uh, the ease option you can do an ease in and an ease out with this slider but uh, the problem with that is if I do an ease in for example he'll uh, slowly start out but then he'll just uh, stop abruptly so it looks good when it starts, but then it abruptly stops. So depending on the look you want, this may or may not work. So in most cases, I use this edit button. And what this allows me to do is do a custom ease, so I can make it gentle on the end. And then when it's coming out, I can make another gentle uh, another gentle move. So this is where it, it starts out gradually, gets uh, faster action, and then slows down. And for the majority of things, this is the kind of arc that you want. So now I get a nice, even ease going through there. So that's a great start. Now the next thing I want to do um, in line with the example that I showed you is do some a little bit of anticipation. So anticipation is when the character goes in the opposite direction in order to anticipate an action that they're about to perform. So because he's about to turn his head um, to the to my left, I want him to lean a little bit to the right. So I'm going to make a new column of keyframes. So this is my starting position where he just uh, he equals where he's been and then I'm going to move to this part where he's about to lean to turn back to my left and I'm going to make his entire body lean now probably excluding his legs because his legs I don't want to move around so I've got everything selected here except for his legs I'm going to hit Q so I can get my rotate I'm going to move my rotate button down here and I'm just going to lean him just a couple degrees uh, over so now what he does is he starts standing up, he leans over a little bit, and then he turns his head over. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have him overshoot his, uh, his final frame, which is here, and he's going to come back to it. So this now column is his final frame, and here where my head turn ends is going to be his overshoot. So I'm going to go ahead and select everything up to his legs, move my rotation point again, and then just have him overshoot a little bit. So now what happens is that he starts out normal, he leans forward to anticipate, he turns his head back, he overshoots, and then he returns to his final position. So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and tween all that. The legs don't move, so I'm not going to add a tween to that. So now we have a nice, whoosh, pretty cool. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to customize this a little bit. 
So I, I really want him to pop into that uh, anticipation position. So he's not going to ease into this move, but he's going to ease out of it. So now, instead of doing it linearly, he goes pow. And you'll see that this frame is just a tiny bit like that. So he, he kind of jerks forward, and then he comes back this way. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this return position. I'm going to have him pop into his final return position. So it's going to be a little bit like this. And this really is a stylistic choice. It all depends on how you want the animation to feel. So now I've got a whoosh, pop forward, whoosh back, and then pop back in. And uh, when I watch this, I kind of want the head turn to be a little bit faster. So I'm going to pull all these keyframes in a little bit. So now I've got it at a good speed I want it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some overlapping motion here. So with this character, his head is so heavy, it usually leads the body whenever he does anything. So in this case, I'm going to select everything below the head and actually push all of these keyframes over one. So this way, he, his, he leans forward and his body actually is uh, struggling to keep up with his head. And what this is is overlapping action where one part of the body or one part of a of an object moves and then the other part uh, is following with it. And then the other thing I'm going to do here is because the head's a little bit uneven with the body is I'm just going to add in a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, tilt here, a little bit of uh, of skewedness so that it follows the, the neck a little bit more. And so the final thing, I'm running out of time here, so the final thing I want to do is add a little bit of squash. And it's actually going to be pretty interesting how much this helps. And so squash and stretch is another principle that really takes an animated character and gives it a little bit more life. It makes it look more organic. And it also makes up for the fact that in most cases we can't do motion blur in animation. Although with digital that has changed. So what I'm going to do is I've uh, created a keyframe here in the middle of the head and uh, while he's in the middle of his turn and I'm squishing his head down and then I'm stretching it out a little bit. So now what happens is he, as he's turning his head, he squashes because of the speed he's going at, his head stretches in the direction he's going in and it squashes down. So now what you get is a whoosh. So you get a little bit of a springy action while he turns his head. And that makes up for the fact that we can't do a motion blur. Um, and if it looks a little bit too squishy, you can uh, de-emphasize the squash and, and just expand the stretch a little bit. So now you get a nice whoosh. And man, it looks so much more natural now, even though we just added that little bit of a squash. Gets a nice cartoony effect too. So now what we've done is we've uh, taken a head turn, which originally was very static and very uninteresting, and just within a couple minutes, really giving it some life. And uh, and that's really cool. And the nice thing about Flash is because we're doing it all with tweens, is we can come back and adjust the timing of this as much as we want. If we want this to be a really fast motion, you know, I can play with these keyframes as much as I want and then come back and just watch them over and over again. And it's all up to me, um, as opposed to if it was drawn frame by frame, where I'd have to redraw frames and take them out and put them back in. Um, the fact that we're doing it with tweening really gives us some nice flexibility. So hopefully this has helped you uh, see a couple of the ways that you can customize your tweening in Flash with a rig character and really give it some life that uh, some anti-tween people might argue not possible. And, uh, and it really gives a nice result. I would say that uh, next time we're going to look at actual frame by frame and just how that differs from the, uh, the tweening options we have here. So until then, this has been Tyler Cupper for Base14.com and hope you enjoyed the tutorial.